Alrighty, um, guys, let's let's get started on the painting. Um, now we shouldn't take too long to get this one done, okay? And we're gonna paint this in two layers, two steps, okay? First step, um, getting in all of the light colors, all the light colors and all of the clouds, all the wet and wet kind of stuff. And then we're gonna let it dry and then we'll get in the buildings and all the little details. So you simplify it to two steps. So in the first step, always remember, um, you know, with the waves in the water, while the paint is still wet on the paper, do what you need to do to get in all the colors mixing and stuff like that, okay? The scene that um, we have here, it's kind of, it's daytime, but it may be kind of near evening because you can see the sun kind of at the edge, but it's up to you. I mean, you can make it look like a completely nocturnal, nocturnal sort of scene. Um, as well, you can make the sky darker. I'm gonna try to keep it pretty similar to what the reference photo looks like, okay? Um, so first thing you wanna do is pick up the large brush, okay? Big brush, and um, just like we were doing before, we are going into the sky with light blue, okay? So I'm gonna pick up some of this cerulean blue. You will have a bit of that on your palette, the light blue. If you don't have any, um, just grab the tubes. I think they're down the end of the table right at the end, furthest from me. Um, this is some cerulean blue, okay? Um, look at that, I'm just gonna drop that in. Okay, just in the sky. Very liberally, just get that in. Okay, and with these bigger brushes you can find, um, really, you can get in so much of that sky with just a few brush strokes. Make sure you use a lot of water and make sure you go pretty light as well for this area if you're trying to, of course, make it look like um, the scene that we've got, okay? So as we get further down near the, uh, what you call it, the buildings, this is where we've got to start thinking about, okay, we're gonna to need to mix in a bit of orangey color, a bit of warm color in here, okay? Notice as well I'm holding the brush near the end. You hold the brush near the end, I find that you can get just more natural looking shapes. And, and you also become less uh, fixated on uh, the complete accuracy of everything and more on the general structure, okay? Leave the buildings, look at how I'm kind of cutting over the top of the buildings, uh, sorry, cutting around the buildings, okay? And the, the reason why I'm cutting around those buildings is because we wanna make a little bit of warmth from there, a little bit of warmth from the buildings, okay? So I'll leave that, and as we go down, you can see this horizon line starts to become more warmer, okay? So around this kind of section is where I'll pick up uh, some little bit of warm color, but before that happens, I'm just gonna shape this building a bit better, like this, okay? You'd be surprised how uh, light, you just go in this sort of section. Often you think it's too light, but that's because we haven't got any dark colors in there yet. Okay, um, I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of orange. Okay, you can mix some orange with your, uh, with your red, red and your yellow. You just drop that in sort of around here. You look at that reference, okay. Yeah. Just cutting around the buildings a bit. Some of this orange and maybe some red, tiny bit of red mixed in there. Okay, very light. And, and let it mix nicely with the sky. And come down like that, okay. Look at that, just... If I can paint something in a few brush strokes, I'll do that rather than fiddling around too much. There, 
And this is your opportunity as well, like we were saying, to get in some of those like lighter areas on the buildings. So you might think, hey, this building would be good to have just maybe a bit of yellow here on the right hand side of it like that. Okay, a little bit of that color. A um, little bit of warmth. And then the rest of the buildings, I'll just mix in a bit of like grayish color around it inside there. So we got like a warm, just a lot of warm color in there, okay? Okay. The idea here is to preserve the light on the buildings so that we've got some warm colors that is mixed in with the kind of blue in the background, okay? So it's kind of a, you're just putting, you're just putting colors, you're just putting a background color on and you're letting it all mix together. So it should be pretty light. You, know, you can even pick up a bit of brown. I've got like a kind of a, a funny brown color that I'll just drop in here. It's kind of like a burnt sienna color. You can try some of that if you want, or you can just use your yellow, uh, mix it around with a bit of gray or something like that. Okay, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. I just like to um, make sure I've got warm colors in here because we're going to go over the top of that with some cooler colors afterwards. Okay. And get this all in in one go. All right. Down. Yeah. Even if you color in all the buildings with uh, a bit of red or something like that, you'd be okay. Just a kind of a pinkish color, a bit of orangey pinkish color. Okay. And notice like, Notice the paper also takes a while to dry. You're using cotton paper, you've got kind of got more time to practice these techniques. Okay, so it's so how are we all going. Okay, like um, we should have kind of like a. Uh, Cooler, sort of bluer, bluey sort of sky, buildings, warmer color, okay. All, all fairly light at the moment. And remember what we did, remember what we did with the boat scene before. We kind of reflected the light into the water. Same thing. So you're going to make that water also a little bit kind of orangey at the top, okay. Pretty much and then you just add in your darker sort of blue colors at the base. Okay. Can you drop in like little bits of darkness in here? Okay. So I'm going to go and just add in this orangey color here. Okay, cutting around the boats as well, this the gondola, because I want to get that, I want to get that gondola in with a more uh, dark blue sort of color. So all I'm using, I'm just using some orange here. So I'm using, I'm not using pretty much any other color, maybe, maybe a touch of red in here as well. Okay, in, the, in this section. Um, and, uh, Bring this all the way down, cutting around the boats. Okay. Sometimes when, sometimes when the paint looks a bit too, uh, just the, the, it's too, too vibrant, I'll just add in a bit of um, grey that's mixed on the palette. If you mix a bit of yellow, red, and blue together, it makes a grey colour. Okay. So we're just mirroring 
kind of the sky. The warmth in the sky is going into the water here. Okay. You just pick up a bigger brush to do this. Okay. Okay. A bit more red, maybe. As we get down further, I'm going to start putting in the bits of blue at the base. Where have I got some blue? Some ultramarine, the darker blue at the base. Okay. And maybe some purple. Maybe maybe a purplish color. As long as it's a cool color, it doesn't matter. Okay? Just at the base like that. Um here. You're okay, mixing because it's all wet. You get a lot of this mixing happening on the paper. And it just blends together nicely. Okay. So using a few brush strokes, a few little brush strokes. Yes. Um, of course, uh, what we were doing before, we were adding in little ripples, little kind of waves in here. So because this area is already wet, that's what you can do. Just drop in some darker waves in here. Okay. Like this. Keep the brush strokes uh, kind of wider at the bottom. Okay. And as we go into the foreground, it gets Yeah, good. Maybe halfway through. Yeah. Yep. So, um, what was it? So, so basically, uh, you're making sure that the front of the painting, where all the water is, you've got a little extra darkness in the front. This is going to help with the uh, this sense of depth, creating a feeling of depth in your painting. Okay, large brush strokes. And the watch as we go up into the back, there's still waves, okay, but the waves are the, the ripples really are just these little tiny little bits and pieces here. And this is where you might want to switch to a smaller brush as well. Remember to keep some of this light at the back. Don't get rid of all of it because you need to make sure it reflects the sky a bit, okay? So that's why I'm saying um, if you use a bit of, use the smaller brush, you can uh, get away with it. Just looks a bit more, your brush strokes are smaller. Waves become smaller at the back. That's a general rule of, rule of thumb with perspective. Um, figures, boats, pretty much everything that you paint becomes smaller as you move off into the distance, okay, and um, soft little brush strokes, it's all, it's all I'm doing, okay. So you can play around with this for like a long, long time. I mean, you can just go in here and just continually add in paint until you feel that area is um, to your liking, really. Okay? But I suggest to... Um, as, as soon as it starts looking good to you, I suggest stop. <laughs> because we... You know, often when you, when you overwork things, um, that's a thing, you overwork a, a painting by putting too much in there, and it can ruin it at times. So... I try to stop at a certain point. It looks good enough for me. 
I think at the moment it looks it looks all right. That wash, um, it's what I planned to do. I wanted a bit of sunlight here in the background reflected in the sky, a bit of darkness at the front. So I'm probably just going to call it here in terms of those waves. Alright, I have a walk around and just see what you guys are up to. Do you have any questions?